Good morning, everybody. Is it a wonderful day in Ohio County? Amen. We have both of our U.S. Senators here today. Isn't that wonderful? I want to uh, thank Steve Gary for uh, hosting this. I think it's one for you to put a lot of time into it, so be sure to thank Steve. Uh, and like I said, it's a good day, uh, and it's a, it's a big, it's important day for us. Uh, coal is very, very important to our county. Uh, matter of fact, everything that this county has is because of uh, coal. Other thing other than, than general government is because of coal money. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our junior senator, uh, which I've known since 1998. And uh, we're really happy to have him as our uh, senator now, uh, Senator Randy Hall. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I knew David from back way back when, when we were both much younger, right? The president says, I have no choice but to act. He says, I've got a pen. I've got a cell phone. What do you think that means? He supposedly taught the Constitution at one time. But he doesn't understand that democracy is messy. You've got to convince people. You've got to get them to vote for you. Then you've got to convince people to vote for legislation. Then you've got to get it all the way through and the president signs it. But the president doesn't get to write legislation. We are being sorely affected in Kentucky by him simply legislating on his own. Some would say he must think he's the king, for goodness sakes. You remember cap and trade? Cap and trade was going to raise our electric rates, was going to put coal out of business, but we defeated it in the Congress. So what's he doing? We're getting cap and trade by edict. We're getting cap and trade where the president just does whatever he wants to do. What we need is someone from Kentucky to defend us against the president, and that's Mitch McConnell. We have fewer people working in Kentucky now than we did in 2008. We've lost thousands of jobs, primarily in the coal industry. But you don't have to be a coal miner to worry about your job. If you sell stuff to coal miners, or you sell stuff to the coal industry, or you simply work in a grocery store in a community that has any connection to coal, your job is at risk. You need somebody that will defend Kentucky against the president and his policies. But we also need to defend against lawlessness. This is bigger than just Kentucky, bigger than just coal, and bigger than just our jobs. This is about the very fabric of our country. Our country was founded upon checks and balances. The president doesn't have unilateral power. The president is not a king. The checks and balances of Congress, it's messy to pass legislation. You've got to convince people. But you can't simply say, I have no choice, I will act. That sounds like something that's foreign to everything that our country stands for. So we will have to defend Kentucky values. We will have to defend Kentucky jobs. Senator McConnell and I have introduced dozens of legislations, dozens of bills to try to stop the president, to try to prevent this regulation that he's bringing on the industry. But we need more help. If we lose Senator McConnell, our state is in real danger of being overrun by President Obama and liberals that he's hired from the California and from Hollywood and from who knows where. I'm proud today to stand up with your senior senator and say, you know what, Obama needs Grimes, but Kentucky needs Senator McConnell. Well, thank you very much, Rand. It's great to see you with us today on this uh, cold tour. And I know you share my pride in Senator Paul. He's a national figure. He's making a difference not only for Kentucky, but for America. He's a great United States Senator for Kentucky, and we're proud to have him on our team. And thanks to the Garys for allowing us here today. And Judge, it's good to see you again. And I know why you're here. You're here about because you're worried about your country. 
This administration has done a lot of damage to America, and this is the year we begin to turn our country around and push back. You know, the first two years they were in office, they had it their way entirely. They had big margins in the House, big margins in the Senate. They could do whatever they wanted to, and they did. The trillion dollar stimulus, Obamacare, an army of regulators crawling all over every business in America with a view that if you're making a profit, obviously you're up to no good. So what's it done to our country? This is the poorest recovery after a deep recession since World War II. An army of regulators descending on America slowing down business and jobs and opportunity for our people. And no area has been a more conspicuous example of that than the war on coal. They are out to put us out of business. They must be stopped. And we began the job of stopping them this November. You know, I remind people, whether you're in a coal county or not, that a war on coal is a war on all of Kentucky. Obviously, if you're in a coal county, it's a war on Kentucky job. And off in the eastern part of our state, as you know, they've got a depression. So far, coal's held up pretty well in the west, but I have a suggestion, a, a, a prediction for you. The administration's headed your way if we don't stop them. Because they don't want to just destroy coal in eastern Kentucky, they want to destroy coal everywhere. This is exactly what they have in mind. The EPA is determined to finish us off. In the name of what? Carbon emissions, they say. Global warming, they say. Well, look, even if you thought that was a problem, let's assume you thought carbon emissions around the world were a problem. Nobody else is doing that. The Indians and the Chinese are building coal plants. The Germans are now importing coal. The Australians recently, a couple of weeks ago, repealed their carbon tax. Nobody else is following. We're off on this mission all by ourselves, led by this administration. As Senator Paul pointed out, without any legislation at all, regulation through the EPA to de design uh, to pursue this goal, after which it will have no impact whatsoever. It'd be like dropping a pebble in the ocean. But it's for us serious pain. We've lost 7,000 coal mining jobs in eastern Kentucky. As Rand pointed out, for every coal mining job you lose three more. These people need to be stopped this year. Now look, you know, my, my opponent says she's a new face. She is a new face. But a new face to do what? A new face for the status quo. A new face for no change at all. A new face to vote for Barack Obama. And her first vote in the Senate would be to make Harry Reid the majority leader of the Senate who said, coal makes you sick. Because of Harry Reid, Rand and I can't get votes on efforts we've made to push back against the bureaucracy. Make me the majority leader of the Senate. I'll be setting the agenda next year. We'll be voting to restore the coal industry to its prominence in America. So well, instead of a guy from Nevada setting the agenda in the Senate, who supports the President and his agenda, a guy from Kentucky will be leading the Senate and setting the agenda. So let me conclude by saying this is one big race. You know why? Every crazy liberal in the country knows who I am. There's nobody they'd like to beat worse than the guy you're looking at. Actually, I'm kind of proud of my enemies. I wouldn't trade them for anybody else's. But the question is, are they going to tell us who represents us in the Senate? I have a feeling we're going to begin to take America back this year. The people in this administration don't understand how we live. They don't understand us, how we live, what we do. They think all the smart people live in Washington and they want to tell us how to lead our lives. But this is the year we begin to correct it. And I'll close with this. 
Winston Churchill, who's I think probably the most quotable person who ever lived, once said this about us, Americans. Here's what Churchill said about America. He said, you know, the Americans, they always get it right after they've tried everything else first. <laughs> For the last six years, we've been trying everything else first. We're going to quit doing that and begin to take America in a different direction and save this country for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you for coming out. Appreciate you being here.